Hey friends and welcome. My name is Dr. Heather Carton and I am coming to you live from Overland Park, Kansas here on Ask Dr. Heather. As you're joining me, let me know where you're joining me from. This is absolutely 100% meant to be shared. So as you're joining me, go ahead and let me know where you're joining me from. Go ahead and hit that share button so that you can share this information with your friends or with your family. Um, also where my questions come from or generally where I choose a topic from is from your questions. People send me questions um, either down below comments or from previous videos and that's generally your gamma information last week i said oh i'm going to talk about inflammation some natural cures towards pain or for inflammation or for fibromyalgia but then i got a whole bunch of questions about colds flus and viruses so that's where we're going to head down today is we're going to talk about colds and flus and viruses what you can do to help your immune system so that's what we're going to share today so again hey ellen thanks for joining me let me know where you're joining me from if there's another hot topic that actually stirs your mind or you just don't just can't figure out put it down below so I can help you better understand current health topics because that's where I started this page from patients would come in and they would come in for headaches or migraine or hormonal issues and then like I'd really like to know about this or there was things I talk about about switching or swapping foods for this or that and then they'd say I said oh well go ahead and make a flax cake or why don't you swap this for that and they're like well I didn't get that can you email that can you write it down so that's where my blog came from which is askdrheather.net where there's over a thousand different recipes that are all gluten-free lots of good ideas about how to put veggies into your diet so let's get down to our topic today with the coronavirus disrupting over in Southeast Asia I've gotten a lot of questions we've had a lot of colds and flus going around our neighborhood I am here in Overland Park Kansas eczema great topic Lena I'm going to put that on the list because I've gotten that question a couple times today so what happened here in Olin Park is it was three degrees last week and then yesterday it was a fabulous 55 degrees. It is now cold and wet. Our mucous membrane is like, okay, am I supposed to have a, a moist mucous membrane? Am I supposed to be dry? The heater's back on, it's cold. We don't know what to do. So we've been told a lot of different things. Um, feed a cold, starve a fever. Where did that actually come from? And we're gonna get right down to that truth. So in 15, oh, my, in 1574, John Whithall said, noted that fasting is the greatest remedy towards a fever. Then somebody else said, no, if it's a cold, you actually need to eat a cold. So you increase the body's natural heat. You don't wanna eat if it's a fever, because when you eat you increase your metabolism that would make the fever worse so now we know the whole science is not true you would not over overheat your body if you had a fever if you ate more food and if you had a cold eating more food like an overabundance of food would not heat up your body's metabolism and actually help cure that cold I do want to let you know that I am a healthcare provider here in Overland Park Kansas um, I'm not here to treat or diagnose your medical condition I'm simply here to help clarify some information that's going around these are the five hot tips I have for colds and flus and viruses and maybe you're fighting maybe someone you know you can actually write them down and use them for a later date but absolutely meant to be shared so go ahead and hit that share button again I'd love to know where you're coming from and I don't know why it just always makes me curious of where people are coming from let's see some in Oklahoma and Ellen said she's from Pittsburgh Lena yes we'll get to that eczema question so in kind of a specific order I never know if I should go one to five or five to one because I always think some I always think there's I always think they're all number one answers. So let's talk about sleep. And yes, I do talk fast. I'm sorry about that. When I push it over to YouTube video, because most things I transfer to YouTube videos, I do always put the script on there so you can listen to it there. So number one is sleep. If you're fighting a cold or flu, or you feel like something's coming on, you're getting a scratchy throat, you're starting to feel run down, but you know you don't need to go to the doctor yet, but it's just something please get some sleep. The average American adult needs seven to eight hours of sleep. You can go to the American Health Institute for sleep and you can see that kiddos need about 10 to 12 hours. Adults need seven to nine hours of uninterrupted sleep. So I've also got a video on good sleep hygiene. So in order to get, when you feel something's coming on, get good sleep. You need to have your last meal four hours before bedtime so you calm down your nervous system. When your stomach is empty and your nervous system is calmed down, then it can focus on your immune system system. Also, when you sleep, that's when your body rest, restores, and rejuvenates. So it can go and work on your immune system. It can go and balance out those hormones. Your cortisol can rest and recycle. It can get rid of that toxic glucose that's in your body. So the best way to get good sleep is actually to 45 minutes before you go to bed. Remember, last meal, four hours before bedtime. Yes, you can have a little bit of broth or tea or water. 
get rid of everything 45 minutes before bedtime that is electrical any of that light that blue light is coming into your brain you can still read a book not a tablet you can take it still take a nice epsom salt bath you can go for a walk you can listen to music you can talk with your family members you can put a puzzle together but get rid of the blue light from the computer from the tv from the tablet it's also a great idea to actually cool down your bedroom about five degrees and this is even if you're not sick it's just good preventive sleep habit and then also go ahead and try a weighted blanket or a grounding blanket that's why I if it's warm enough outside to go walking um, for just even a few minutes because it gets your lymphatic system going before you go to bed again let your feet touch the earth if you live in a warm environment that will help your body stay nice and balanced and your ph stay nice and balanced so number one get good sleep even if you haven't gotten sleep for the last month you feel something's coming on get some good sleep practice those good sleep habits and i promise you once you start getting good sleep you'll get addicted to good sleep and you'll keep those habits <clears throat> coming on Number two, immune system. Keep a nice, healthy immune system. Sorry, let me take a quick drink here. <clears throat> so immune system, how do you strengthen your immune system? We know all viruses replicate on glucose. Yes, I said that all viruses replicate on glucose. So the more glucose that you eat, the more you replicate that virus. So I know it used to be go have a Coke. I was just talking to my mom who's here who was born in the 40s, and I said, what did you used to do when you used to have a cold or flu? She's like, oh, we'd go down to the drugstore and we would get the dark Coca-Cola Coke syrup. We would have that, and we'd have a tablespoon or two, or we'd have a 7-Up, not a Sprite, or we'd have apple juice, or we'd have orange juice. So now we know all of those sugary glucose things were actually fast-forwarding the flu or the cold or the virus. The bacterium would actually feed on glucose. We know all viruses feed on glucose. But there's not any virus, and I did look this up, it is science and research, doesn't feed on ketones. So if you're eating the normal American diet, the best thing to do if you're fighting a cold or flu is to reduce your carbohydrate intake. Yes, there is great research showing that fasting actually can help fight off colds or flus or increase your ketone uptake. So if you're already on a low carb diet, maybe go ahead and take that next step to go into ketosis or add some exogenous ketones into your diet. Or if you're just on a paleo diet or if you're on a zone diet or just simply lower your carbohydrate intake, switch out the grains and just add some more green leafy stuff in there. Maybe tighten your intermittent fasting hours. All those are shown to help strengthen your immune system. What happens is when you're eating in a 12 hour window, your body's digesting food for 12 hours. That's all it's doing is digesting food all day long. If you eat in a six to eight hour window, or if you do just one meal a day, let's say, let's just go this. If you're eating in a 12 hour window, eight to eight, which a normal person does, maybe you tighten that in and say, gosh, I think I'm getting something. The kids have gotten something. All my coworkers have it. It's going around wherever it is you're working. Say, let's tighten that into a six hour window that you're going to eat. You still get all your nutrition in, in that six hour window. Well, the other 18 hours of the day, now your body can do some great work. It can go work on your immune system. It can go help make some new healthy white blood cells, some new healthy red blood cells. It can actually get the pH rebalance where it needs to be. It can really start doing some great work instead of sifting and sorting and digesting food. So it makes sense increasing though digesting those intermittent fasting hours can help your immune system. Also with your immune system, ditch the dairy. It's just mucus. So you can still have grass-fed butter, but I would get rid of the yogurt, the cottage cheese, all those mucus producing things again get rid of all the sugar because sugar turns into glucose which actually will fuel the virus or bacterium and so will yeasty products yeasty things will also we know yeast can lead to virus or bacteria bacteria will lead to yeast issues so get rid of all the yeasty stuff even things like sauerkraut um key for those type of things get rid of the yeast if you think something's coming on so number one was sleep number two is increasing your immune system by intermittent fasting getting rid of the carbohydrates and sugary stuff and non-processed foods things like we talked about the orange juice the toast and jam things we'd normally do and go back to the bone broth like grandma used to do the collagen's great for your lungs it's great for your body it's a great ph it's got high macronutrients again as you're jumping on late let us know where you're coming from if you've got a great recipe that may 
maybe your grandma or family has passed down um, from from generation. Let us know what you'd like to do. Number three, nutrition. People are like, what can I take to strengthen my immune system? What are the best things? Maybe you haven't caught a cold or flu and you're super happy about that and you don't do the flu shot and you say, what can I do? Well, number one, I love vitamin C. Vitamin C makes your body very acidic so things can't grow in it. Things like virus, bacteria, and parasites. And so people are like, well, how much should I take? Often you can do a vitamin C challenge um, and you just actually increase your vitamin C. This is the thing you want to do at home on a weekend. Take a thousand milligrams of powder vitamin C every hour on the hour. So take a thousand, then take another thousand, another thousand. Let's take eight, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. You can email me later and I'll post it later. So you take until you get to bowel tolerance. So maybe you get to 11 grams of vitamin C and then you actually go to the bathroom number two, or you get some loose stools or diarrhea. That's your bowel tolerance for vitamin C. You don't have to do that, but some people like to know how much do they absolutely need or just increase your vitamin C maybe to two to three to four grams. Because again, vitamin C makes your body very acidic so things can't grow in it. We often have a lot of digestion issues. We don't have enough hydrochloric acid. Our guts are supposed to be a little acidic so viruses, bacteria can't grow in it. So increase your vitamin C. The other thing, vitamin D levels should be 75 to 100. When you look on the lab report, it'll say 30 to 100. We know that vitamin D is a sunshine vitamin. We're not getting enough of it. We can't even absorb enough if you're outside. Vitamin D is so important for our immune system. It's so important for our heart health. It's so important for warding off cancer. Definitely important, especially in the winter time right now for colds and flus, as it's dreary outside. If you know you're in a state that doesn't get a lot of sunshine, get your vitamin D3 levels checked. Again, we want them to be 75 to 100. I generally have my patients take their vitamin D at night so it can rest and digest. It also helps with sleep. So that's the second one I would think. The other vitamin I would take is a nice B complex. Vitamin B6 is one of the most depleted vitamins. As yes, it's used for neuropathic pain. It also helps with digesting carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. It's super important in making white blood cells. It's important in making neurotransmitters and some of the other things for your brain. Also helps cope with stress. We know stress can weaken your immune system. So add some extra B6, B12, it'll help calm down your body, help handle the stress, along with B12 would also be in that B complex because it helps make red blood cells, although these are important for your immune system. It also helps with digesting. We know that B12 is an intrinsic factor for your stomach. We know the stomach is one of those first places that digestion hits. So having some extra B12, again, a very high quality and methylated form will help. And we know every single cell in your body needs B12. So those things, plus a little lauric acid, lauric acid is also monolaurin. It comes from coconut oil. It's C12. It's antiviral, antiparasitic, antifungal. So, and also the last thing would be some sea salt on your food. You can actually put it after cooking. You can put a pinch and you can lick it on your hand. You can put it in your water. I like to take my boiled eggs or my sushi and dip it in sea salt. Or again, anytime you're feeling tired or run down, I'm a lady of the 80s. We used to put salt on slugs. I'm also a farm girl, but salt also thins mucus so you can gargle with it. We're going to talk about self-care next. So those are some supplements you can take. But when looking for supplements, make sure that they don't have any added sugar in any form or name. They don't have any funny binders that you don't know what they are. They don't have any red dye colorings, this or that. They don't have any gluten in them. Read the label very specifically, please. And if you need suggestions for supplements, let me know and I'll be happy to help guide you in that direction and give you some because I have patients all the time. They think they've gotten the best and then they go to read it. Like, what do you mean it has like, so, like it has soy in there and has lettuce and it has red dye number 40 and it has this and it has glucose and maltodextrone and like some of the powdered things. I'm not going to say what they are, but like that has sugar in it. So watch for sugar. We just talked about every virus feeds on glucose. You definitely don't want to be taking a vitamin C that tastes really good and chewable that's got coloring and additives and sugar in it. The same thing's true for vitamin B. So those are the the ones that we talked about, the supplements that are best for helping your immune system. Next one, self-care. This can be super big. So when's the last time you guys got a new toothbrush or cleaned your toothbrush? All right, our mouth touches everything. Get a new toothbrush or get a new head for your toothbrush. Generally, I tell people every 10 to 14 days, either boil it, get a new one, throw it away. 
definitely get one. Misty is saying vitamin D is such uh, which vitamin D is a good good to add. So vitamin D is a standalone vitamin. We ought to do a whole topic just on vitamin D. Misty, I'm writing that down. Vitamin D is a standalone vitamin. So you need to make sure that you get it super clean. It seems like there's too many on the market and aren't effective. So Misty, I'll come back and answer that one at the end. I want to get through this. I just wrote it. You can see on a big red letter, vitamin D to get back to that. But you're right. You want it to be standalone, all clean. You can get a vegan form. Um, But again, standalone anywhere from, depending on your levels, we have up to 25,000 IUs, 10,000 IUs, um, and we'll come back and talk about that. Um, So uh, self-care, get a new toothbrush. A lot of things happen in our mouth. If you haven't done that at all, get a new toothbrush. Make sure you're cleaning. If you haven't had a new pillow in the last three months, get a new pillow. We spend half of our days in our bed. So we know a lot of things contract through our nasal, right? Or through our nose and through our mouth and through our eyes and through our ears. You're laying on that pillow hour after hour after hour, day after day or so. Get a new pillowcase. White is always the best when it comes to sheets because they are the cleanest. So get a new pillow. I know people buy really, really expensive pillows, Ben boo pillows, things like that, then just go get a nice liner that's a protective liner because your hair falls out on that, dust mites feed on that, your skin sheds on that. So make sure at least every month or if you're having a cold and flu right now, make sure that stuff is clean, your bedding is clean. And talking about that, I am pro all natural detergents and fabric softeners when it comes to your bedding. We know there's so many studies showing out there when you're using really good smelly stuff that has artificial junk in it um, for your dryer sheets or dryer softeners that can make you very sick. They can be cancer causing. You guys can look up the studies on that. Um, That would also be something I recommend. So we talked about oral care, good oral care, what you're sleeping in. Also what you're putting on your skin can be very important. Also make sure you're drinking out of glass and not plastic and change your water bottle every day or every half a day. So if you're the person who takes the same water bottle to work every day and you're drinking out of it, yeah, that saliva is all refeeding back through there or the same coffee cup or teacup every day. Make sure you're changing that out um, as you go through that because you can keep feeding that saliva back through there. And that's why we're saying new toothbrush, new glass, and glass is shown not to leach other things off of there. So, and then hand washing, make sure that it's not all about the soap. It's about the friction. Stop and sing happy birthday with your kids. If you have kids at home or sing it in your head. I'm in public restrooms. I see people go soap, gone. And like, oh my goodness, you've got to get the friction to get stuff clean and really dry it off. It's not how much sanitizer and how quickly you can wash your hands. It is a friction that counts. So, and then the last thing, and we talk about self-care is fresh air. I know it can be a little bit chilly, but get the fresh air moving in your bedroom. If your bedroom's stagnant, you keep your door closed, maybe because of pets or apartments or sharing it with roommates because your office may be closed up as well. Open up your windows for just a few hours of one day or every other day. Get some fresh air moving in there. That's really going to help dilute anything that's in the room or hanging around the room. It's really hard to keep your HVA system super clean because there's always particles in there. Get all that fresh air in there. It will definitely help. Number five, last and not least, de-stress. Whatever's stressing you out right now, just let it go. If you're not feeling good and you're feeling kind of run down, let it go. My thing would be just let it go. Let it go. I want to sing the song, let it go. And that would be, um, you know, I tell people, if you're the person like, oh my gosh, you're wearing the mask. I'm going to get sick. I'm going to get sick. I'm going to get that. I always get everything. Have you ever heard the person say, I'm going to get everything. I get everything that goes around. The person. I always get sick in January. I always get sick in February. I always get the coldness. Stop it. You're like, oh my gosh, my immune system is amazing. It's healthy. All that stuff you put in your mind before you go to bed, like I'm going to get an amazing night's sleep. I'm going to have a great immune system when I wake up, my body's going to do all it needs to do when I'm sleeping. I'm strong. I'm healthy. I'm exercising every day. I'm sweating every day. I'm eating really good every day. I am not going to get sick. I'm not going to catch anything. I can't remember the last time was I had a cold or flu. Honestly, I'm being super honest. And if you keep telling your body is going to get sick, it's going to believe it. Because when you talk about manifesting and you talk about vision, things like that, if you keep telling your body it's going to get sick, it's going to get sick because you told it that. Because sometimes your body can't tell the difference between what you're manifesting and what really is perception and what is truth and reality. 
So tell yourself, I'm healthy, I'm well, I'm healthy, I'm well. So that's when I would tell yourself, I'm healthy, I'm well, and move forward with that and tell yourself how amazingly healthy that you are. That's gonna go a long way. And we know that when you're more positive and more grateful, it does amazing things to your immune system. It's real science. You can go on Dr. Google. If you're if you're brand new to Ask Dr. Heather, I always call it Dr. Google because I have patients come in and they, they saw it on the, the Dr. Google. So it must be true. But So I'm gonna review those things. So when you're warding off colds and flu, feed a cold, starve, what is it? Feed a cold, starve a virus. We've been looking at this since 19... 1574 was the first time we read that. So number one, sleep, super important, our secret weapon to our overall health. Number two, we talked about things that you can do to increase your immune system each and every day, not just when you're feeling sick. Number three, we talked about very specific supplementation that you can take for enhancing your immune system. Number four, self-care items to help increase your immune system and to keep everything somewhat clean. You don't need to be a germaphobe, but just lowering your chances and keeping things out of kind of, again, your respiratory canal keeping that nice and clean and then we talked again fresh air and number five was simply just positive and reducing stress and keeping the positivity up high so i hope these tips have actually helped you really realize there's a few things maybe in your life that you can deal because we're not out of the woods with this cold and flu season it's gonna put some snow tomorrow in kansas again again it was so sunny outside we barbecued outside the dog was playing outside rolling in the leaves and it's supposed to snow again in less than 24 hours and it is cold outside i have a blanket on my lap it is cold so um my thing would be not knowing what the weather's going to do I treat your immune system every day, baby your immune system every day. Again, and I say drink water at warm temperature. Your body is 98 degrees, so drink things as it should be in natural. Eat lots of greens every day. Eat whole foods every day. Again, I would challenge you to the intermittent fasting in that eight hour kind of time frame because that's going to give your body the best challenge every day so that you can actually, it can work on your immune system, work on your brain, work on healing, whatever may be out because you have this thing called neutrophils, this amazing immune system system that you don't even know is working just as you're sitting here listening to me or as you're working every day and you want it to be armed and ready to go. So again, hopefully these tips have helped you. If there's something you absolutely want to know, I know Astrid's asking about um, omega oils. We'll talk about omega oils when we talk about heart health and brain health. So I think the last question we had was about vitamin D. I'll close with that. So um, a few years ago, somebody asked me on a radio talk show, if I could pick one supplement, one nutraceutical, what would I pick? on my shelf because I have you know iron and vitamin D. I have lots of different type of um, probiotics, prebiotics, lots of different omega oils, DHEA, EPA. We have a lot of different supplements in our office. I would say I would take everything away and I would make sure vitamin D was the number one thing I give my patients because it was that important to me and I knew how much it was a predictor of overall heart health, cancer disease, heart disease, vitamin D because I know how much it helped with brain, bone, health, heart, and cancer. Biggest predictor, 75 to 100 is the optimal levels. And now today, when someone asked me, I did a podcast last week, what was the number one supplement you would give someone if you only could pick one? And it is Prove It's Pure Therapeutic Exogenous Ketones. I'm not setting anything up. I am an independent promoter for the company Prove It. So if you would like to get a hold of that product, I would absolutely love to share that with you because what we have found is exogenous ketones are our body's natural fuel source. I didn't answer it that way several years ago because it wasn't available several years ago. It's only been available since 2015 because it helps with brain health, our most important organ in our body. So when it comes to vitamin D, someone asked me, where do you get it? It depends on what your levels are. I dose it to patients depending on where their levels are when we check it via blood. And so I give it to them based on what their preference, maybe they're kosher, maybe they're vegan. Sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. And I also look at their overall other blood health. So we actually give vitamin D anywhere from 1,000 to 5,000 to 25,000 units. Your body really only breaks down about 10, about eight to 10,000 I use a day. So if you give 25,000 units or 50,000 units, your body will probably only absorb about eight to 10,000 units. It needs 12,000 I use every single day. If you're on the sun, eight, to 10 hours, you're only truly gonna absorb about 1,000 IUs, and you're using, again, about 1,200 every single day, so you're always gonna be at a negative aspect. So just knowing that you do have to supplement with it, it is a standalone, it's not enough in a multivitamin, it's not enough in a multimineral, it's something that you do need to have standalone, you do need to have it checked at least once every six months. Um, And again, there are some people who are predictors to some genetics who just don't absorb it very well, so that would be my answer there. Um, And I love your questions, they're super great, so I am gonna take some time 
but again, please share this with people. Everyone's asking about colds and flus. What can you do? Don't wait to be sick. Practice these things. Get a new pillow, get a new toothbrush, lower your carbo, lower your overall carbohydrate intake. Um, because that, again, if you put yourself under stress, you haven't changed your sheets because you're too busy, you're not getting enough sleep every day, all that stuff leads to the perfect storm for you catching something. The question is, how come some people get sick all the time and how come some people don't? It's not really a genetics game. Genetics do load the gun, but some of it is. If you look at the five things, I'm not getting enough sleep. I'm only sleeping three or four hours a night at a time. I'm up and down or five hours. You know what? I'm not feeding my immune system. I'm super busy. I have to go on the go and I have to drive through. Maybe you're a person who never gains weight. So then you think it's okay to have the donuts and fries because it's not a weight issue for you. So you eat the carbohydrates and then you don't take supplements because you don't think that you need it because your body's okay and you think you're eating okay because your weight's fine. I'm not picking on anyone. And then self-care is that, you know, you're just kind of busy. Like you get a toothbrush every six months when you go to the dentist. And I think you need it more than that. And like, you don't even think about opening fresh air because people have told you to keep your house warm and things like that. Um, maybe you are a great ham washer and that's okay, but some of those things all lead up together. And then, you know, you like your clothes to smell really, really good. So you use the bounce or somebody's dryer sheets. Sorry, I said that instead of using something like seventh generation or making your own dryer sheets, um, you know, and then again, you think you handle stress pretty good and nobody could tell, like she seems super calm and super chill all the time, but inside your immune system is like going morning, morning, morning. So sometimes it makes the perfect storm and I'm not I'm not pointing fingers at anybody guys I'm just saying that that's what happens when you get sick is that all those things together come crashing down then your immune system is a good immune system is like okay I give up I give in okay the virus wins the cold wins the flu wins and then that's what happens so I want to mention two more things I saw some questions so um, I think fever is a good thing um, our body is 98 degrees so when you're cooking food you increase the heat to kill the kill the critters when you're, when you're washing your clothes, you put them in the dryer to kill all the stuff that's in your underwear and in your socks and in your clothes to do that. Or when you're storing food, you put it in the freezer to get it really cold to stop things from growing. It's nature's way of saying pause. So we in our family, we do let temperature rise a little bit. So if our kiddos were cutting teeth and they had a 100 degree fever or 101, that was okay. But generally over 101, then we would use something to help lower the fever. But it's, there's a certain point. So we were talking here not about certain to fever how high do we let fever go before we medicate or don't medicate or use something natural there's a lot of nat amazing natural things you can do but it is our body's own way of cooking out bacteria and critters so knowing that i think oftentimes people make the mistake of giving tylenol all the time with a little bit of a fever because again 98 to 99 and then you're never letting your body fight the the bug in there because that's how our body actually kills out bacteria and virus. But these other things we mentioned can be amazing. Hey, Debbie, thanks for joining us. Love seeing you. Awesome to have you here. Eric and Justin as well. I don't ever want to leave anybody out. Daniel, thanks for joining us. So sometimes I hate to leave people's names out. But I hope that these tips have actually helped you or maybe you can pass this along. Maybe you've got a granddaughter or a son that's always got some kiddos that are a little bit underneath the weather. Maybe you say, you know what, let's get the OJ for breakfast. That may help them not be sick as so much or maybe they don't need the treat after school or maybe you're the one you have the donut at work but these things do work guys those are five major tips to help reduce your chance of fighting a cold or flu again please share this let us know where you're joining us from because i know where some of you are joining us from if you've got a hot tip let me know i am going to launch a series on chronic pain and inflammation we're going to make it super short and sweet one or two little topics a day instead of five flash topics like this we're probably going to start on thursday wednesday is ash wednesday for me i am going to do a 40-day whole food challenge that means I have to give up popcorn. Yes, I eat keto, but I know how much little popcorn I can have a skinny pop to stay in my macros. Um, but we are going to do probably a launch of that. And Dr. Jamie just joined us. So we are on day six of our 10-day keto kickstart. We do a boot camp style keto kickstart twice a month. So we're at day six right now. And so yesterday, Dr. Jamie did an amazing job talking about how exercise can actually help with depression and anxiety and how important it is in your life to get it in an American Association says 2.5 hours per week, which is 40 minutes, four times a day, not your ADLs, your activity of daily living, being a super busy mom like Dr. Jamie with four kids, but actually committed to exercising, get up and moving. So that was an amazing article that we shared. I shared it down here and asked Dr. Heather about some psychologists, the first line of defense for anxiety and depression is actually exercise. We'll talk more about that as well, but I'm going to go. I put eczema on the list to talk about because someone did mention that as well. You guys have a great, great, great day. We hope to see you soon. If you have 
have a question, drop it down below. If there's some of the other things I talked about you want more questions about, I'll drop it down below. Again, on sleep, I have a YouTube video about that. Um, hydrochloric acid we talked about, I have a YouTube video on that as well. Just jump over to YouTube channel, Ask Dr. Heather. If you want to be part of our 10-day keto kickstart, just contact myself or contact Dr. Jamie Trent on here. We can both help you join that. And you guys have a super great day. Thanks for joining me.